So what comes to your mind when I say the word purity? Uh, for me, when I was 15 years old, someone very close to me gave me a talk about what it meant to be pure, and they actually handed this to me. And he asked me to make a commitment to stay pure. And I know it sounds kind of weird for a ninth grade guy to have a purity ring, but whatever. Uh, and he said it was supposed to symbolize my commitment and remind me to fight to remain pure. Now, and then he went on to talk about all these statistics and all these things that could go wrong if I didn't wait until marriage to be with a girl. And everything he said, to be honest, scared the crap out of me. So I said, definitely give me that ring. I'm going to put it on right now. He also went on to, to help me take some steps and, certain, and, and set certain parameters to make sure that I didn't cross certain lines in my fight to be pure. And I honestly thought that by putting on this ring and by putting those things in place, uh, I would be set. But I quickly found doubt, though, that even as a Christian, the struggle was real, right? And all of us have felt that bent in us, especially living in a culture that is increasingly blurring the lines and twisting our view of relationships. So listen, students, I could sit here and I could tell you about all the brokenness this has caused, right? The, the, the crazy availability of pornographic images and the effects that that has had on our relationships and even things like human trafficking. Um, I could tell you about all the shame and the guilt that comes from making decisions that honestly you might regret and, and can lead to having a skewed view of yourself. So listen, our actions uh, that we consider impure can, they do bring consequences and brokenness that at times can make us feel crushed. And while I also could sit here and I could give you this five-step step process, I could pass out uh, purity rings to help you fight for, pur for purity, um, I, I could do that, but I, I don't, I don't want to do that tonight. Because uh, although I do think that these things can be helpful, um, what I want to do instead is to help deepen our desire to be pure. And I want to do this by broadening our definition of the word purity. Because listen, God not only has an answer to our lack of purity, um, but also a definition that you might not expect. So let's see what the Bible has to say about this and why it matters. So uh, if you have your Bibles, open up with me to Colossians chapter 2. I'm going to begin in verse 20. Um, so it says this, check this out. If with Christ you die to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Things like do not handle, do not taste, do not touch according to the human precepts and teachings. These indeed have an appearance of wisdom in, 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 in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Now, this is sort of a weird sounding passage, so what's going on here? And the bottom line of what he's saying, he, saying here is this, right? He, he's saying, there has been something done in you through Jesus. So he's talking to a group of Christians here. Uh, and, it's, and it's something that gets underneath the surface of simply keeping the rules or being a, a good person, a good Christian, or even being pure, right? He says that's not what it's about. It gets, because it gets underneath the crazy struggle uh, to defeat the desires in you, right? The desires that often lead to brokenness. It's not just about taking practical steps, because uh, that's what we do, right? Uh, like the ring. He says, when all you do um, is try to be a good person by putting steps in place, it might create the Im image that you're a moral person, but it doesn't get to the root of the problem. In other words, he says, check this out, purity is not skin deep. Again, purity is not skin deep. It doesn't cure um, what is really inside of you that gives you these broken desires. So what, what exactly is the problem and what is the cure for our desire? So let's keep looking. Um, chapter 3, verse 1 through 10. It says this. If then you have been raised with Christ, uh, seek the things that are above where Christ, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and, in your, li and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ who is your life appears... Then you will also appear with him in glory. So put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual morality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of all these things, the wrath of God is coming. And these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self 
with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the Creator. So listen, first of all, the, the definition that the Bible gives us here and everywhere else about purity is holiness, uh, which simply means being morally blameless or without blemish. So listen, it's not just it, it's not just exclusive to physical or sexual things like we might think. Um, in fact, the Bible would say that God made you and he made me with the intention of being pure um, because we were made in his image. And, and by being made in his image and living pure, that would bring us delight and pleasure in him. Um, but instead, we chose not to embrace that. Right? The Bible would say that we traded being pure and we twisted God's design and we redefined it. And instead, we chose impurity. And it looks like the list of things that he gives us starting in verse 5. Um, and this in turn, students, this brought brokenness and death. So listen, that's the problem, that it brought death, that you and I are dead, that we were dead. So in other words, our problem with purity, it's not a pornography problem. It's not a gossip problem. It's not a cussing problem. It's not a sex before uh, marriage problem and everything else that you could think of. It's that our minds and our hearts are set and are, are set on and are in love with things outside of God's design and it brought spiritual death in us. So what he's saying here is, is this, check this out. He's saying the lack of purity is a symptom of our spiritual condition, which is death, right? It's that we're both, that we're all born naturally walking into this list of sin that Paul tells us about. It's our bent to love and do things that eventually lead to our unraveling and they don't satisfy us. So listen, students, this broad definition of purity, um, honestly, is a little bit more dangerous because it, because it takes on different forms and it brings about all kinds of brokenness in our lives. Right? It, it could be the hateful thoughts towards other people or are bent to rebel against authority or even thinking of ourselves um, better than other people because we're awesome rule followers. So regardless of what it looks like, it, it, it stems from um, going outside of God's design and choosing to love other things other than God. Right? It's because you and I are dead. So this is actually why he starts this chapter by reminding, him, by reminding them of something. So in verse 1, he says, listen, although that was true of you, you have been raised with Christ from your spiritual death. Right? Something significant was done in you where God, because of Jesus, he breathed his spirit into you and he woke you up. And not only that, but all the mistakes that you had made, he, he, he took on those. And instead, um, he treats you as if you had lived the pure holy and blameless life that Jesus did, right? He takes your place and he gives you his. So bottom line is this, he says, purity begins with life in Christ, right? This happens when we commit ourselves to him and he throughout our entire walk with him, he begins to rearrange our thoughts and, and those impure things that we loved and we set our heart um, and our minds on, what he says in verse two, on heavenly things or things that are part of God's kingdom. He also says in verse four, Christ becomes your life. And when that happens, the things that preoccupied our minds, they change. So, but, but why is that key? Because listen, our impure actions always begin with impure, with impure thoughts. So that's why this matters. So for that reason, the answer that we see God give us uh, for our impurity problem is this, check this out. It's deep delight in Jesus. Right? He breathes life into us. He rearranges things. He sets our minds and our hearts where they were originally supposed to be, which is, on, which is with God and with life with Him. Right? We learn to love and delight in the ways that He calls us um, to walk with Him. And in fact, He goes on to say, check this out, in verse uh, 3, verses 12 and 13, He says, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. So listen, it's not until we've understood uh, the heart of the problem and the cure for it that Paul gives us some practical steps. He says, finally, as you understand your identity as God's chosen ones, those that he has raised from the dead, only then work towards purity by putting on these things and gives us a list. So why does that make a difference? It makes a difference because purity is beautiful to those who are in Christ. 
right? It's so much more than just a set of rules to avoid consequences, although that's a good thing. It's, it's delighting in Jesus and in turn following his ways. That's why uh, Jesus often says in the book of John, if you, go, if you go look, he says, if you love me, follow my commandments. So listen, the reason this is super important is because our fight for purity is useless if we don't get to the heart of the issue. Right, one helpful way that I heard this explained once uh, was from one of our pastors here at a church. He talked about a house that he was going to buy. And when he showed up to see it, um, he, he saw that there was this random PVC pipe hanging out, hanging out the front of the house and it was leaking water. Uh, and there was a, a bunch of water sitting in the, front, in the front yard. So he called the contractor and he said, hey, uh, there's this random PVC pipe. What, what, what's the deal with that? And he said, well, um, the AC unit that's in the roof is leaking. So we put that PVC pipe there. Um, to, to drain all the water out. So he said, all right, I want, I want to buy the house, but that PVC pipe has to go. So he came back a few days later uh, and it was gone. But as he walked towards the backyard, he saw that they had just redirected the pipe towards the back and it was still leaking. So he called the guy again and said, listen, the actual unit, the actual AC unit needs to be fixed. I want to get the actual issue fixed. So listen, if you want to fight for your purity, do it by going underneath those skin deep steps um, and instead start with your heart. Otherwise, uh, impurity will just take another form in your life. So let me ask you this question. Do you know Jesus? And if you do know Jesus, what are those places in your life where you aren't quite delighting and finding joy in his ways? Listen, joy and God's will for you are not at odds. So fight to walk in a way um, where, those, where those two things feel aligned. And lastly, if you're sitting in the room tonight and you're thinking, man, I've, I've made a lot of mistakes. Um, I want you to know that you are who Jesus came for, right? That he, that he came to take your past and, and lead you towards purity. Remember, purity is not skin deep, right? It's not your actions, but rather what Jesus has done for you and how he's growing you into his image. Now, so students, now that we know all this, we're going to break up into small groups and continue our conversation on how we can fight for purity together.